Hey guys, Corey here again, and uh, this is our next video on data structures in C, and this is going to be priority queues. Um, they're an interesting one. Uh, I'm assuming you know what queues are when you're watching this video, and that you've either seen another or my video on queues, because, I mean, why would you know about priority queues if you didn't know about queues in the first place? So I'm just going to briefly skim over queues again, just to get our memory going on what they are and how they work. Um, uh, and not spend t as long as I would because I assume we already know about queues. Um, so priority queues, what's different? Um, why are they useful? Okay, so in my last video about queues, I talked about they're useful because maybe uh, when you want to queue, for instance, if your computer's throwing error messages right in the background while something's running, it's going to pile those up and you can look at them in order of what they happened. Um, uh, and so you can deal with those in the order that they happen. For example, when you're, when you're compiling code and you're looking at error messages, it'll, it'll give you the last error message that came, but you want to go up and look at the front, right? Because that guy, from er all the other errors can stem from him, and sometimes I fix 20 errors by just fixing the guy at the top. So queues are like, you can also think of them aligned as people, right? If I get in line at a restaurant and five people get behind me, well, I'm going to be the first one helped because I'm at the front, okay? Um, and that can be useful for a number of reasons. Um, a priority queue, though, because sometimes some things are more important. Like, for example, if I'm getting a couple minor error messages, then my computer's like, oh, my God, you know, we're, we're on fire right now. You know, we need to deal with this right now. Well, do you really want to put that message on the back of the queue? No, so you give it a priority, right? Um, for example, if some VIP, like the owner of the restaurant, right, comes in to wait in line for the restaurant, obviously he has higher priority than the average guest, um, and he'll go to the front, you know, something like that. Um, or if you, uh, my cousin, for example, he is, uh, he's, uh, visually impaired, and when we go to amusement parks, we get to go through, we get to go to the front of the line, like, every time, it's fantastic, it's fantastic, um, it's great, um, you know, we have higher priority, um, so we'll look at how we do that. The base methods are the same, uh, you remember we see initialize the queue, it's empty, NQ, and then PNQ, PNQ is the new guy. He's the only new guy in the block, right? And he just gives somebody a priority. So normally, I'm, I, I'm going to... Priority is just going to be a number, okay? So each node uh, will come up to node real fast. Um, it's going to have one extra value from last time. It's priority. That's it. And you see this max priority here, right? So lower priority is better. So a one is like the best priority you can have, basically. You can go negative if you really want. So you can have up to like infinite, you know, negative... Uh, priority and just be like the king of priority queues, but the max priority is 999. The reason I do this uh, is because uh, every normal node uh, I enter, I'm just going to automatically give it the max priority. That way, if there's anybody with any sort of priority, that way they don't out-prioritize each other, first off. But if there's anybody that comes in with any specific priority, like, there's any reason we want to give them priority, like, this guy's pretty important, he'll automatically rank above the normal everyday guys, okay? So let's quickly just go through the code uh, real fast. You'll see we have a struct for a, a, a node in the queue, same as before, just with priority. Uh, we just, all it does is point to the guy behind him in the queue. Um, it has the number that he's holding on to, basically like my reservation number or something if I was at a restaurant or the air, actual error message itself, or we're doing the error message example, and it's priority. Uh, we have two forms, the Q node and the Q node pointer. We're going to be working with pointers so that we can manipulate them when we're going through, like if we want to change who his next is, or if we want to change his number, or just pop off his number, a bunch of reasons. But we need to use this Q node because when we want to free up memory for that pointer, well, we have to have like an actual struct object to, you know, to get the size of, to know how much memory we need to free up. And so that's why we have Q node, okay? And then the Q is the same, exactly the same. Just has a top and a tail. Uh, same reason why we do uh, a pointer variable, because we're going to be manipulating the Q. So we're going to use a pointer naturally. Um, but we have this Q types, because when we initialize it, we have to free up memory. And if you try to free up the memory of size Q, well, it's a pointer. So a pointer doesn't really have memory to it. It points to memory. So we've got to do Q type, right? Q type to... Uh, which is an actual struct object with all these parameters in it so that it knows how big they are, so it knows how much memory to give us. Okay, same functions as before. Init Q is empty, NQ, PQ, uh, DQ, P, and Q is the new guy. So the main function is the same as last time. We're just enqueuing a bunch of things and then popping them all off to show you that they were uh, the guy we first put in 54 is going to come out first, but this time he won't 
because you see we're priority in queuing uh, 2 and 8. And we're giving 2 priority 1 and uh, 8 priority 5. So it should be 2, no matter, even though there's a huge queue, 2 should go at the front and 8 should go right behind them. And we'll switch that up a bit and show you that it's working. Um, all right. So here's where we initialize the queue real fast. We just free up the size that a queue would normally hold for it to point at. We just set its top and tail to null and just return it. Okay? Pretty straightforward because we set up here... Q is equal to init Q or initialize Q. Okay. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Is empty just returns. If the top is null, it means there's nobody waiting in line. It's pretty damn straightforward. Um, I probably shouldn't say damn. I'm going to get demonetized by YouTube. <laughs> I'm not even monetized in the first place. They have no power over me. <laughs> Fight the system, man. Uh, I just realized my German flag is visible back there. It fell down, so I gotta rehang it. Deutschland. Love the German soccer teams on fire this season, boys. Get hyped for the cup. Um, cup's not for a couple other years. But, <laughs> moving on. Oh, those Olympics. Um, so, for in queuing, it's exact same as before, except when we make our new node, see, they put in the number, so we just make a new node that we free up the size of a node for it, because it's a pointer, so it doesn't automatically have any memory pointing, you know, for it. So if we try to just automatically set new node done, blah, 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 we'll get an error. In fact, it won't even throw you an error message. See, I saw a quote once that C is like a uh, figure skating um, naked uh, on, you know, like a sheet of ice with razor blades, okay? C does not always, C will never lie to you, okay? In the sense that if things don't work well and they're not efficient, it won't run, okay? Uh, like if, if you don't explicitly say everything. It won't be like another language. Oh, I'll infer it like Python sometimes does. Or it, it won't lie to you. It will not. It'll follow literal to the exact step. But that comes with a certain danger uh, in the sense that you may run into bugs uh, that it doesn't see as an error itself. For example, if I just said Q, no, you know, Q pointer new node, right? And say I didn't have the end of that, right? And then I did new node num equals num new node next equals null. Well, this guy's not pointing to any memory, so he'll go search indefinitely for the memory it is pointing at, which is nothing. So as soon as I try to deep reference values from it, not going to be good for us. Okay? Um, but C won't tell you that. C, won't, C, C will not tell you that. And I have run into that error many times. In fact, my previous videos, if you watch them as well, you'll see that there's some times where I had to pause the video because I had no idea what was going on. I come back hours later like, that was the error. Right? Um, I, I think two videos where that's happened. Um, but it, it's good because, uh, you know, that you, you saw me do that, and it's good that I did that during the video, because now, actually, I've had that happen on a couple more codes, and I've been able to boom, 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 spot it like that. I go, hmm, why is it going in, you know, an infinite loop? It's probably that error. I find it, fix it. So um, it's really good. You know, that's why I don't like immediately going over um, coded things and just going, here's how it is. I like them telling you, I messed up here, here was near that. And that's why in most of my videos, you'll see me code it out for the longer stuff. Because um, I like to show you guys the errors that I run into and how you fix them. Um, uh, so that if you run into those, you'll know how to fix them. And it just gives you a thought process of how I deal with errors when they pop up. So if the queue is empty, we'll just uh, make the... Uh, if, if it's empty, which is this else statement right here, we're just going to make the top is new node and the tail is new node. They're the same thing. But if it's not empty, the tail is now the new node, right? Or the, new t the tail, the current tail... He's not pointing to anybody, right? So we'll just put in the new node, and then we'll just make that Q-tail pointer now point to him, right? So you see that Q-tail's next is now new node, and now the tail is new node, because he's at the end now. He is the tail. He's at the end. Um, and we made the guy before him point to him so we don't lose him when we're cycling through. Okay? That's why we need to track. Even though we're only popping off the guy at the front, that's why in a Q we need to keep track of the tail. Uh, so we know uh, where the end is, so we know where to insert, guys. All right, here's the new guy on the block, P and Q. Um, he takes in the Q, he takes in the num, and now he takes in priority. That's the only thing different. So it's, it starts off the same. I just make a new node. I allocate the memory. I give him his number. I point him to the next guy, null, because he's going to go in at the end normally for a normal null. Um, and then I go, is his priority is greater than max priority? Just set it to max priority. I don't want anyone greater than 999 because if he is at, you know, someone shoots up 
really high. I don't want anybody outranking just the common dude or like under ranking the common dude. You could totally change this and be like, he is only once you've dealt with everything else. Like maybe he's a miner, like you have a you know file explorer just wants to change some guy's path, and that's not super. Um, <laughs> uh, so I do guys. I broke my foot yesterday. As a side note, yeah. Did a handspring for the first time. That's got someone just takes to me saying, "Sounds like something you would do." So that's why. Sorry, back to back to what we're doing. Um, you could totally have you know a last case scenario guy that a guy but only comes when everybody else is dealt with. So if anybody else new comes, he's like, "Oh no, go in front of me, go in front of me." It's like if somebody's holding the door and he's about to walk in, but more people are coming. He's like, "Oh no, go in front of me, go in front of me." You could do that. Um, I don't want that in that case. But if you ever saw that foreseeable case, you could just get rid of this line. Right here, you don't, uh, because if you say put in 10,000, he'll be put at the back and any new person that's coming in will go in front of him. So he won't come to the front until everyone else is excused before him. I'm getting rid of that feature. Um, so if anyone accidentally puts in 10,000, it'll make it as uh, the same priority as the common node. Um, so it depends on the situation. Um, because sometimes it, it's, you, know, you want to eventually deal with him and it may, he keeps getting stuck at the end when things that could wait keep coming in. Um, as common nodes, things could get bad, but it really depends on the situation. Um, like a lot of programming does. You know, there's a lot of these things you could fine tune and tweak to different situations to make it more efficient. I'm just showing you a general case or maybe a, a given case and saying why I'm doing it that way, but what you could change. So uh, the same thing over here. Uh, if it's not empty, do all this junk. But if it is empty, just top tail equals new node, right? No reason checking priorities and everything. If, you know, it's empty. So in this scenario, um, we're going to go, we're first going to just check it against the top. All right, we're going to say if the new node's priority is less than the top node's priority, just plop them in as the top node. New node's next is the current top, and the top becomes new node, right? We're just kind of shifting everybody down and putting him in there. Pretty straightforward. If he's not, well, okay, I'm going to uh, make two nodes here, uh, a previous temp and temp. You'll see why I need two uh, uh, right off the bat. So I'm make the current temp, all right, so I'm going to make temp equal to the top guys next, right? Because we've already checked against the top. So might as well shove them, you know, might as well check against the next guy, right? And I'll say, well, temp's next does not equal null, okay? Um, uh, and temp priority, um, well, the current temp that we're checking is uh, less than, um, <coughs> sorry, I lost my train of thought. Well, the current temp guy's priority is less than the new night priority. Well, we know he's not supposed to go there because the current guy that he's comparing against has a lower priority than him. So we're going to do temp is equal to temp next. But then we're just going to have this previous temp guy store that, the temp that we just had, right? So we're just cycling them back, right? And you'll see why in a second. If uh, temp next uh, is equal to null, um, then we know we've hit a point where... Uh, Temp is equal to null. Actually, this should be, yeah, yeah, yeah. This should be a uh, temp. While the temp is not equal to null, uh, it's a remnant of a different way I was searching through it last time uh, that was throwing me in error, so I changed it this new way. So if temp uh, is equal to null, we know we're at the end of the list, right? We're at the very end of the list, and what we should do is just plop them there. So if temp is equal to null, right, uh, then Prev temp is the current tail, right? So prev temp. I'm amazed that it was, wor it was working before I started filming this because it shouldn't have worked with my new search method like this if it hit a certain case. Prev temp next is equal to new node. And the tail, okay, so the tail is now the new node if we've hit the end, right? Now the previous temp, in this case, since temp is null, the previous temp is the last guy on the list, right? Because his next is null, and that's the tail, right? So his next is now a new node. We're just putting new node in at the end. And the tail is now pointing at new node, okay? A lot of the, like, the word temp and prev temp getting thrown around, but all we're doing is we're saying, oh, we're at the end of the list of the queue. So I'm going to put new node in there because he, he had no higher priority than, or lower priority than anybody. I'm saying higher priority, but like in reality, priority is going to be lower. <laughs> so he didn't have a better priority is what I should use. Uh, than anybody else in the list, so we're just going to put them on at the end. Okay. Um, otherwise, 
if temp is not null, then we know we have a better priority than temp. So new nodes next is going to be temp. We're going to put them in between the previous temp and the current one. We're just going to put them, boom, right in there and say that this guy's next. Since we're putting him in the middle, he's going to point to temp. But we also have to say previous temp's next is equal to new node. And by the way, I sometimes do it if they're really short if statements. I just put multiple lines on one line. You can do that. Your computer does not care how you organize it as long as you put semicolons correctly. I thought I might want to state that. Um, like if it's a one line if statement, usually I'll just slap it right in. Um, like right here, just slap it on the same line. No reason taking up all the space with brackets and everything. Like um, I was tempted to put these two on one line, but I thought it might be hard to see because there's pre temp and temp, so it's kind of hard to wrap around the idea of what's going on. Um, yeah, so that's our priority in Q. Okay. We're just checking until he, we find somebody who has better the priority than, and then just putting him in front of that guy. Okay? If they have better priority than him, we just move on to the next person. That's it. If we've hit the end of the list, well, tough luck. He's not better than anybody in the list, or the queue, I should say. And we'll put him at the end. All right? Pretty straightforward. And then DQ is the same. Uh, if the list is empty, just print, hey, the queue's empty, bud, and return. Otherwise, uh, the top num, we're going to pop the guy off the top, right? So the top num is equal to the queue top num. And then we make a temp uh, pointer that just points to the top, uh, which we're just going to free. That's all we're really going to do right now. And then we just move the top to the next guy. We just say the new top is equal to the current top's next guy. Free up the top and return his number. That's all it is. Okay. And uh, let's do it. And as you see, you see two... We had priority one, which is the best priority in there. Um, eight had priority five. So even though they're added last, they should be at the front, right? Which, as we see, they are. Um, but say I switch it up a bit and I go, that has priority one, that's priority five. Now we see eight at the front, even though it was added after two. Okay, so that's a way to override the normal queue settings with priority. And we could even try it with like negative 10. Let's see if that'll work. I haven't tried it with negatives yet. And we see two goes at the front. So negative priorities work as well. So you can keep putting higher and higher and higher priorities by just making it go negative. I should say better. Better and better and better. Better priorities just make it more and more and more and more negative. In fact, if you wanted to ensure a guy always goes on the front um, or in front of another note, like say you wanted to make a, a, an error message that always goes in front of another one, you could probably search through the list until you find that guy, or maybe, you know, and just put him in front of there, but maybe you don't know, maybe um, you don't know, maybe he'll have a different error message or number inside of him every time, but he'll have the same priority every time. You could look for that guy's priority and then just add one to it and go right in front of him or something like that, you know, or match it and just put it right in front of him. Um, in our case, if they have the same priority, it'll just move on. You could have it, if it's less, if it's less than or equal to, and just put him in the front. Either one works. Um, it really either way does not matter there. But so there's a lot of different minor tweaks you can do with this to make priority work a little differently, um, depending on what you want. And there's ways to ensure a guy goes into a certain spot inside of the queue by manipulating priority or looking at priority. Like say you wanted him to be in the middle, you could just keep going and going and going until you know maybe you look at the range of the tail and the top's priorities and say, mm, maybe the guy should be about you know 450 should be about the middle. And then you hit somebody with like 430 priority and you're like okay, I should go right in front of him or something. There's a lot of little things you can do. But um, that's basically it for priority queue. It's just putting in normal nodes, but with a better priority than others to put them to the front in certain specific situations. So it's basically just a queue with one extra function that just adds a tiny extra little feature. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope you understand priority queues a bit better. And I'll see you next time.